So first I'll start by introducing my family. I have my brother, Michael, and my mom, Kelly, and my dad, Paul. And then I also have my second family, the Little Houses, um, who don't go here. <laughs> so, welcome. Um, I'm actually going to start by reading my mission statement and then, or breaking that down and talking about what events in my life has led for that to be my mission statement. So it's, I aim to recognize both the power and the beauty in individual lives and through the world, through intellectual understanding, dedication to the knowledge of healing, and through being present and bravely facing the challenges life presents. So seeing the beauty in individual lives, to me that means seeing the potential and um, joy in each person's lives, regardless of who that may be or what they may be doing. Um, I've seen that throughout my whole life, specifically through my brother Michael and the special needs population, because there's great potential in every one of those lives, and it's great to help. My dad's already crying. <laughs> and um, I think it's special to help recognize and enhance that. And so I've learned that life isn't beautiful despite its imperfections. I've learned that it's beautiful because of them. And I'm, I'm younger, but growing up to be older, basically, um, has made me consciously think of like who I want to be and how I want to live. And that um, ultimately has started a value of mine for like advocacy and having a strong backbone for what you believe in so that you can help represent other people by first being strong in yourself. Because if you're not really strong in yourself, you can't really um, advocate strongly for other people who can't necessarily advocate for themselves. Um, it's also created a love for investing in other people because since the day of birth, as most people with siblings have, they've always supported them and like poured into them and they love them unconditionally, more or less. And so um, it's, I love seeing other people succeed and that's happened with me through Michael and like coaching basketball or track or just hanging out with his friends and seeing them succeed makes me happy. So that started my passion for like investing in others through that. And also it started an interest of mine in neuroscience and the brain and medicine because I basically grown up in the neurological community and um, I just, I think it's beautiful that you can heal others and impact other people's lives through your gift and passion. And like personally for me, that's neuroscience and medicine. And um, through healing that and like using that passion to help others, I think that's awesome and that can help increase other people's potential. Um, also studying neuroscience and medicine for like not very long in my life, but it's um, obviously, <laughs> but um, it's helped answer some questions of mine that are pretty significant and pretty obviously pertinent in my life. So that's a way that I find like solace in that. And that leads to the next part of my mission statement, which is intellectual understanding and dedication to the knowledge of healing. And that basically shows in my high school career because you know middle school is great, but it wasn't the peak of my academic life. So um, freshman year I went to Mullen and I transferred because I just wanted a different academic environment. And so sophomore year came here and it was pretty easy. The hardest class I took was a push with Mr. Hajek, but like he taught it, so it was easy. Um, <laughs> junior year, on the other hand, basically killed me. I basically died. Um, I took the worst class I've ever taken, AP Econ. It's not you, it's your class. Um, <laughs> it was the, <laughs> the worst class I've ever taken. Um, in addition to like the ACT and college stuff, um, I had family issues going on at that time. My grandmother was suffering from Alzheimer's and like she's been suffering for a while, but like if it was a graph, she was like kind of here, kind of here in the junior year. It was like, Phew. like that was kind of where it, I don't know. Um, so, so um, I was, there was a lot of stress going on junior year just because I wanted to invest 100% of myself in my life or into different, every category of my life. So like school and family and friends and sports. And I just wanted to give 100% of that. And um, looking back on it, I really wouldn't have changed how awful junior year was because it, like I was stressed because I knew my life mattered and I knew that like what I was doing mattered. So like I wanted to make an impact on people with my future and I knew that academics was like my vehicle to do that. So I knew that it wasn't gonna be sports like some people in this room or service like some people in this room. I just knew that that was my vehicle and I wanted to um, optimize that. So I was stressed because I didn't want that to let that like uh, go. And then junior year was busy. I like 
I feel like from the start of junior year to a little bit after it ended, I was just like going, didn't really have time to breathe and think about what was happening. So um, in the middle, throughout junior year, I thought about applying to this three week summer program at the University of Pennsylvania. It's, this is probably my nerdiest moment. So <laughs> like I'm embarrassed talking about this, but it was three weeks of neuroscience research at the University of Pennsylvania. So yeah, it's really nerdy. But um, I applied to that and got in with the help of Dr. Quartz. You really helped me through that. And um, so I got in and went for three weeks and I could just study that stuff without any pressure, without any grades or assignments or tests or anything. And I was just, at that time, I was just in awe at life. And I came across a quote and it's studying the brain is like opening the little black box of life. And I figured that's why I also like neuroscience and that type of stuff so much is because like everything the brain does is life. Like it's the reason you make decisions and you feel and you act. It's the reason for everything. And it's, it's basically studying life. And um, that's kind of when I felt most connected to life, which make, made me feel more eager to live it and exercise all that my brain can do and wants to do because like not everyone can. Um, so like if I have that passion and I just don't do anything with it, I feel like I'm wasting it because it can help other people. Um, so that leads on to wanting to stay present in life and um, face the challenges life presents, which is the last part of my mission statement. And that, um, that was present to me when I went to Kenya my junior year. So like, okay, so school ended, right? <laughs> school ended. I was in two sciences, so I had to stay after and take another final. Um, my grandma died like right after that whole, like after finals. Um, I took the ACT June 9th, so I was like doing stuff for that in addition to being with my family. My birthday was the 10th, okay, so like that's a big deal. And then <laughs> I went to Kenya the 12th, and then I was in Africa. So like I just, there were some times in Kenya when I was sitting there alone and I was like, what just happened? Like this whole year was, what just happened? But um, especially in the safari was that time. And it just made me recognize how big the world is and how much there is to see and do and just, yeah, but how little time there is to do it. And that just made me feel like excited and ambitious yet scared at the same time. Cause I was like, I don't want to waste my life. I don't want to like, I need to like, I want to do something. And so that one, that was a huge part of me wanting to just be present and be invested in life more. Another part of that was Nepal because senior year, you're like finishing off and um, obviously you're hiking in the Himalayas and like, that's beautiful. I mean, they're just mountains, they're, they're already, but like, um, <laughs> um, no, but of course they're beautiful. And Everest especially was, um, it was a really big mountain. And um, <laughs> I was looking at that and I was like, all right, this is cool because God created us above like that, above like all this. And he put that in our hands and he just values us so much. And there's so much that we can do in life that's so powerful, that's just special. And like, you need to optimize that and just be opportunistic of like every minute you have because there's so much you can do with what God's just given you. It's just at your feet. Um, so yeah, all those experiences um, plus more have shown me the different dimensions of human life and of the world, which led me to just like be in awe at the world and everything that's just at our feet and at our hands that we experience every day. And um, the good and the bad in life are just beautiful because our ability to just live and experience life is also beautiful. And those experiences, just the few that I mentioned have led me to think that. Um, so now I'll go into thank yous. Charles, um, I don't know if you remember this, but the first time I knew we'd be close was when it was like midnight and I was working on this thesis for your class and I emailed you and I sent you the thesis and I was like, hey, is this good? And I like gave you an outline and you replied. It was like midnight, 1 a.m. And you were like, yes, it's fine, go to bed. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> so um, just, but I'm in your room every morning at 7.15 and I drink coffee with you. And no matter like where I'm at, I can always find refuge with you in your room and just like your friendship, you're very honest. Sometimes I walk in and you're like, hey, you look like death, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> well, thank you. But um, I need to find another teacher like you at Wake Forest because uh, it really helped me get through high school, so thanks. Um, Dr. Quartz, um, you helped spark my passion for anatomy and 
medicine and even though your class was hard I loved it so much like I can't remember a time when I didn't look forward to going to your class and I can honestly not say that about any other class I've ever taken um I just felt at home and just excited to be in your classroom and I really admire your intelligence and your mentorship with me throughout the last two years so thank you um Mr. Kaufman isn't here so I guess we'll just skip his oh, not good. um you'll have Mr. Kaufman went to Kenya with me and um, you see the world like I do and you just help me understand it on a deeper level because you're a lot smarter than I am and you're better at articulating it. Um, Kenya for me was a huge introspective turning part in my life and you were a huge part of that and I really appreciate that. Um, uh, just because I'm graduating you can't get rid of me because I'll call you when I need real life advice. So thank you. Um, Paul, not you, but my friend. Um, <laughs> you're not my friend. Um, <laughs> um, okay, like, let me just call this kid out real quick because, so AP Physics, he says down, he rips his pants at the beginning of the test, okay? It's so, like, that's awesome, okay? Um, what was the other one? AP Gov, I'm in this test, and I look over, and he has a bloody nose. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this poor guy, like, he can't get a break. The AP Lang test was today. Last night, he gets a concussion. <laughs> the poor kid. Thank God you're not in another AP because you probably would just die. Like that. <laughs> um, but whenever I need someone to like, <laughs> whenever I need someone to just talk to, and I feel like we're always just on the same mental state, and I really appreciate that. Um, you're so awesome, and I'm happy you just have someone I trust. I'm happy you can trust me. Um, Tess, um, I think we've had conversations that last hours that just simply consist of talking. And I'm sure we really annoyed Coach Jess with that. But um, I love how you understand my sense of humor because I love laughing with you and like going into practice and just knowing that my day will just get better. And um, you also, sometimes I just have a tendency to just study life and not really live it. And you show me how life needs to be lived in and not just studied. And I really appreciate that. I need that in my life. Um, Morgan. So if anyone doesn't know the story about how Morgan and I became friends, it's this. So sophomore year, we both transferred and we were in Spanish and we were both so awkward and just so quiet and like we didn't talk. And then Miss Menegas walks up to us and she's like, you guys need to get each other phone numbers. And we were like, okay, here's my phone. <laughs> and so like, we were just, just so awkward and like we probably didn't text each other for like a year. But like she basically forced us into being friends. And I'm really glad that happened because you were the first friend I basically made at Valor. And you're probably one of the most reliable friends I've ever had because you listen to my issues and the minute I need advice on anyone or anything, I, can, I know I can go to you and you're going to do great at being with. Um, Hannah, um, <laughs> you're just my go-to person. Like if it's like two in the morning and I'm like, my life is miserable and I need to cry, I call you. <laughs> and so I appreciate that. Um, you're one of the strongest, most loyal incredible people i've ever met um you've revealed to me some of the most obvious joys in the world that i just used to be so oblivious to and i'm really sad i've only been friends with you for a year because i wish i was supposed to be longer um caroline and the woodhouse family um you guys collectively not to sound cliche and romantic here but um <laughs> you fill in the parts of me that i lack and i know i can go to you guys and just feel like collectively just really happy um, you forgive all my mistakes, and I know you're willing to drop everything for my family and I, and that's so valuable to have a friend like that. Um, you've been there during the darkest and brightest parts of my life, and you're truly the best example of the best friend that I could ever imagine. Um, okay, uh, mom, um, thank you for balancing all that you do, like when you worked and driving me to the ends of Colorado for practice and whatever and um, raising a family that's probably not the easiest to raise. Um, you balance a lot and you do it so well. Um, thank you for showing me the world because it's probably the best gift you've ever given me and it's irreplaceable and not a lot of people can say that. Um, thank you for recognizing my independence and uh, encouraging me in it, even though a lot of times you don't agree with the decisions that I make. And, um, <laughs> Thank you for listening to what I think and what I see and what I want and agreeing them, but also challenging them so I can see different perspectives and not just have unilateral vision about stuff. Dad, 
Thank you for never missing one of my games. Actually, I remember one game you missed. <laughs> that, that's it, though. That's pretty impressive because, like, I played basketball forever. So, um, and thank you for coaching me and coaching Michael and owning a business and showing me how important it is to always still go to church on Sundays. You never miss anything. Um, I love how you also understand my humor and make me laugh to, till I cry. Um, thank you for allowing me to learn and process life with you and show me what it means to be strong in God. Um, thank you for tolerating my mistakes and correcting me even when I know, even before I know they're happening. That shows your wisdom and it shows how you just always look out for me, even though I don't know you're even doing here. Um, and if I had to describe some, if I just described you to someone, it wouldn't be that you're a bad singer or that you're a bad cook or that you're a bad driver. None of that comes to mind first. Um, it comes to me that you're just one of the most incredible men of God I've ever met. And probably the most valuable lesson you've ever taught me is to work as if God does nothing but praise. He does everything. And I think you embody that fabulously. Okay, need a break. <laughs> Michael. Yes. <laughs> Damn, okay. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, in my opinion, you're the one that holds this family together. Um, you've shown me love, patience, persistence, joy, and fortitude. Um, you never run away from any challenge. And I think that's rubbed off on every one of our family members and every one of my close friends. You're undoubtedly my best friend. You're the reason I wake up in the morning, even it's, if it's because your music is blaring <laughs> at 5.30. Um, <laughs> either way, it makes me happy, and I'm glad that's the way it is. Um, you're probably the main source of joy in my life, and you've shown me the store of hope and joy in a world that sometimes can seem so lonely, and when time sucks, you make me happy. Um, you've made me the person I am today, and I credit all that I am to you because you are my biggest role model. Um, the name Michael means like a God, and I think that's so fitting because a lot of people turn to God for their purpose or turn to God for comfort, but I turn to you because I think God works through you most strongly in my life. Um, all that you embody, like patience, joy, strength, is incredible, and I haven't met someone who embodies it better. And I'd be lucky if my husband is half the man that you are. Um, so yeah, that's all. Uh, we have some time for questions and or voice of encouragement. Is there? Yeah. Um, I remember in Kenya at Children of Hope. Um, I didn't know till later when someone said it in like our debrief or whatever, but. I guess you had sponsored a kid there and just to see the relationship that you built with him was so admirable and I wanted to emulate you at Children of Hope like in my entire life. I was like, I want to emulate the way Mary had that relationship with that kid even though he didn't know that you had already like seen him before the trip to see that you guys like found each other. It's just like God, like that's what I, I was like, wow, that's just such a God thing and I just wanted to use that. Thank you. Hi, Helena. Hi. Where do you hope to take neuroscience for your future? Um, I want to practice medicine, but um, I also want to do something like globally with it because I like traveling and I've been lucky enough to go on mission a mission trip every year I've been here, Thailand and in Nepal. And so I hope to do something um, globally with that too. I don't want to keep all the money I make. <laughs> I want to give it away. So you're gonna be rich. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. I have not even asked you your most embarrassing moments. But you transferred in here as a sophomore, you went your ninth grade year at a totally different school. I know you had heard things, you imagined things. What was there about Ballard that you imagined was going to be one way and turned out to be just utterly the opposite? Um, 
I didn't think I'd have so many teacher friends then, you know? Because, <laughs> like, like I, I love, like, every teacher in here, and, like, they've really helped me out. And, um, like, I think I thought I'd have, like, one or two, like, teachers that I really like. But, honestly, any one of the teachers or adults in this room, I trust wholeheartedly. So I, I didn't really think that would happen. And it's probably my word of advice to, like, any freshman, too, to become friends with teachers. I feel like I have way more than one. But, um, I mean, once in Nepal, I kid you not, there was a spider probably <laughs> the size of my fist. Like, this thing was massive. It was in the bathroom, and we were, Cameron, Cameron and I were sharing a room, and we were like, we're not, we can't go to the bathroom. Like, this spider is going to eat us. Like, we're not going to go to the bathroom. We can't. We did, we did it. And our bathroom, we had a bathroom in our room, and there were probably like 400 daddy long legs on the wall. And like, they're not, we weren't scared of them, like, they were fine. But, like, yeah. But, um, like, after you see a spider that's the size of my hand, like, anything is scary. And there were so many, and there were no lights, and it was terrifying. And so, naturally, we were like, dude, we're not going to the bathroom. Like, we're not, no. But, like, we had to. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> So one of the guys was like, oh, I just like peed on the deck last night. It was fine. And we were like, we can do that, right? Like, yeah, it's fine. So <laughs> we go into the top deck. <laughs> we go into the top deck and it's, it's raining. So we're like, it's fine. You know, it's, it's night. No one's, whatever. No one knows this is happening. And so we go into the top deck and we just pee on the deck. Like, it's fine. <laughs> and then we're in the, like, we're in the middle of it. Okay. <laughs> We're in the middle of this. I'm getting really red. I can feel it. And our translator, Pradeep, walks up the stairs. <laughs> and don't, don't get me wrong. Like, Pradeep's a great guy, but like he slept with Dylan. So like, he's, he's a great guy, but just we just couldn't really bond with him. So um, he sees us mid P, and Cam and I just like. We're like, oh my god, no. We're like, I'm sorry. And we just stand there and we're like, <laughs> everybody's like, oh, I'm sorry. And we're like, oh, I'm sorry too. <laughs> I don't know. It's got to be up there. It's just so culturally inappropriate. <laughs> I don't think you knew that story, Jay. <laughs> Do you have a favorite picture of yourself, possibly, that you've taken a lot of, of maybe in the fall? Um, I could probably put some up. I did some modeling in the fall. <laughs> With my phone? With your phone. Yeah. <laughs> you can, if you want me through any modeling project, you can contact Jay. <laughs> That's Tess's work. It's Tess's work. Tess's photography. Well, I'm really uh, glad that we spent thousands of dollars on your trip so you bring the pee outside. <laughs> From a period perspective, I hope you got somewhere out of it from that. But, uh, the thing I, one of the things uh, I'm most proud of you and really could go for everybody in this room, all the students, is that you've all, uh, you've made such good friends and all your friends are such good people. And uh, I think, and again, I think that goes for all the students and kids in this room. So just, through college and that to continue to surround yourself with good people because uh, they will support you and you can always tell a lot of a person about your friends and, and just continue to make good friends like you have in middle school and high school do that in college and I think you and everybody here will end up in a really good spot. Well, one quick story Mary. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay. Uh, and she said, I like to challenge her, so I'm going to challenge her on one thing that she said in her speech, which was that Michael was the glue that holds our family together. And I think maybe, uh, although that, that's definitely true, uh, Mary is super glue who holds her family together. Super girl. Super girl. Yeah. <laughs> super girl. Super glue. That's hard to say. Super girl. <laughs> um, but um, 
when Michael was just uh, three months old, uh, one night I woke up in bed and I just had this feeling that um, that um, God was sending us help, and I knew it was she, and um, so then she came three months later, and um, ball of fire, and um, <laughs> really has been uh, a big um, guiding light for uh, me, but also our family. Yes, she's truly heaven sent. Oh, you had something to say. Yeah, what was your favorite discovery trip? Um, they're always really different. I can't really pick favorite. Sorry. I mean, clearly Nepal, because you guys are the two that showed up. All right, thank you, Mary. Uh, uh, we're going to get up and pray over Mary now. Thank <laughs> you.